Hello everyone. Welcome to JGK Master Class. Guys, in today's video, we are going to learn about determinate or systematic errors. The topic is from analytical chemistry, and here we will solve some previous years of question of MSc chemistry. So our very first question is: What are determinate errors? Give appropriate examples. So first we will see the definition or the points which describes a determinate error. First, you can see here it causes the mean of the data set that is represented by x bar. Mean of the data is represented by x bar to differ from the true or expected accepted value. So basically the x bar the mean of the data set is differ from the true value here we will see the example later it is generally undirectional with respect to the true value means it may be higher or it may be lower than the true value and these errors can be avoided or corrected easily so we will see here now one example you can notice here we are taking here nicotinic acid and there are two analysts to perform this uh, test there are you can notice here six set of data and uh, the analyst one when it performs the uh, performer get this type of uh, results where 3 and 3 ratio is uh, he is getting uh, while the other analyst uh, perform the test and you can notice here all the data is varying or you can say it is undirectional and scattered data with respect to the true value. The center value, the line shows the true value and this you can notice the result which is you are getting here for the analyst one is away from the true value. So as the definition says that uh, it is uh, away from or it, it is differ from the accepted value. So you can see here the bar, the x bar, uh, if you take the mean of the six data, then that will be differ from the true value. Similarly, it is applicable for the analyst two. You can notice here the values, the data is away from the true value, a more scattered value. So uh, this type of data when you get, you can notice here the first analysis, it is showing high HP and LA. What is HP is high precision and LA is low accuracy. So we have already uploaded a video on precision and accuracy. If you haven't seen, you can uh, uh, watch that video. I will share the link in the description box. So as per the definition, like you have here, it says a high precision means if you have the closeness of the result, you can see here the three results are almost close to each other, then we say it is highly precise. But when the data which you are getting here is away from the true value, then we say it is having the low accuracy. So basically to have the accurate result, the measurement result should be closer to the true value. But in both the cases, you are having low accuracy because the data which you are getting for your experiment is away from the true value. So therefore, both is having low accuracy. The second analysis is having low precision also because uh, none, uh, none of the data is having the um, uh, closeness. Uh, all are away from each other. So it is having low precision also. So this is an example where we can find out uh, that uh, determinate error is present here. And uh, you can see how much determinate error is present uh, if you take the mean and uh, subtract it from the true value. The first analysis is giving minus 0.7 while the other analysis is getting is minus 1.2 percentage of determinate error or systematic error. Now, if you have accurate measurements, then the chances of determination error is low. Means you, you can see here low accuracy is giving you determinate error. So if you have more accurate result means if your results are close to the true value, then the determination error can be avoided. So, if this question comes, you can describe all these points with taking this example and uh, you can explain it nicely. The next question is, explain the various methods adopted to minimize a determinate error. Means how we can minimize. So, we will see minimization of determination error or correction of the error. First is instrument error. Means this determinate error can occur because of the instrument error. 
so for that we have studied already that the calibration of the instrument is required what is calibration means you have to see all the um, parameters of uh, instruments gradation then uh, is is there any uh, problem in the instrument because of you can see due to the time or wear or corrosion or mistreatment of the instrument you have to do the calibration each time so first is because of the instrument error you have to do the calibration that is a must step before going to do any experiment personal error personal error means that because of the self uh, discipline is required or care is required while taking the or sampling the sample so the most essential requirement is you have to fight against bias what is that it means uh, when you are sampling the sample here taking the measurement or doing the analysis you have to be very careful otherwise it it, it arises a determinate error or causes a systematic errors the third is method error and it is difficult to find out method error but though we have certain points to find it out one is analysis of the standard sample so here you have to detect uh, the standard sample which you have prepared in a way that its composition should be exactly same to the material which you are doing uh, taking for your test so the composition of the standard sample and the sample which you are analyzing should be same the second is independent analysis what is that means you have to conduct the parallel analysis for the same sample to establish the reliability means you should get the reproducible result if you are not getting that means certain method error is present and finally it is the blank determination and uh, most of you have studied this uh, that uh, blank we have to run before performing any sample so that whatever an uh, error is present because of the reagent uh, contamination or you can notice that the glass vessel employed for the analysis any defect is there that will be taken care by the blank so you can cancel out the result which you are getting for your sample by running the blank and you will get the absolute value for your result and in this way you can minimize the determinate or systematic error so i hope uh, you understood the the type of uh, determinate errors and how to minimize that so see you in the next video happy learning